Oh, hi. Uh, I'm glad someone could make it. Uh, so, I'm Emma Hayes' persona. Uh, Emma's asked me and his shadow if we could participate in an interview with the public in order for people to have a greater understanding of the work he's doing, kind of revolving around his personalities and how, how they're coping with lockdown. So, the way this is going to work is a selection of questions Emma has received are going to be asked to me in the shadow, and we're going to do our best to give you appropriate answers. Um, simple, really. The, the other fellow is just running a bit late there, so I hope you don't mind if we wait on for him and then we get started. I know, I know, I'm late. Uh, did something come up? No, why? Why are you late? Because I didn't get here on time. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Um, I'm sure a bit. Of, uh, I'm sure you're a bit confused about how this works, but uh, I believe the first few questions are kind of geared towards explaining our situation, so we can just get into it. So, question one is, who or what are you? So, I'm Mog. part of the image that you see every day, and the face he wears in public, and I'm the one that greets you with a smile. Uh, I need to be liked. This put that out there now and I'll probably say or do anything in order for you to like me. Uh, I'm really particular for the rules and I'm not one to throw away from the pack. Um, I don't really have a name since I'm part of MS Consciousness but a lot of people would refer to me as Persona or whatever so we'll just go with that for now. I don't feel like doing this. You have to answer as an interview. But I didn't agree to it. Yeah, but Emmett did, so you have to play along. Fine, let's get this over and done with quick. Unlike him, I don't care what other people think. In fact, I'm the exact fucking opposite of him. I'm the one who knows that Emmett finds other people exhausting, and that if he doesn't speak to you in the first place, he probably doesn't want to speak to you at all. I'm what he doesn't want you to see. I don't really fucking care what you call me either. Someone's a bit touchy. Fuck you. He's what people would call a shadow. He's a side of us that um, we repress. We usually don't want anyone else to see because they don't really do well in society. They're kind of assholes. But um, they're not all that bad. Uh, sometimes people repress good parts of themselves too. So, Moving on. To question two is... Do you speak to each other often? Um, actually, no, we don't. This is actually one of our first real conversations, believe it or not. Um, it's usually more of a passing comment here and there. Um, Emmett's been trying to get us to speak for a long time, but we don't really mix well. Kind of, that's up to our conflicting natures or schedules or whatever you want to call it. So we've been a bit hard to pin down. Um, more like you're too much yeah. of a fucking wimp to sit down and try and talk to me. And as you can tell, he can be a bit difficult sometimes. So, question three then is, how do you feel about each other and what's the relationship? Well, it's not like I dislike him, he's just not very approachable. I mean, I wish we could get along, but it has to go both ways. I you can't really have a one-sided relationship, if you know what I mean. As I said before, he's not all bad, and I'm, I'm willing to try and make this work if he is. What is this fucking couples counselling? We're not on Jeremy Kyle. If you don't tell him what you think, I will. Jeez, how am I meant to talk to him? Like, do you see what I'm putting up with? <laughs> As you can see, the relationship isn't exactly fucking airtight. <laughs> Christ. <sighs> when did you first become conscious and what was your first memory? Um, Jesus. I don't really remember our first memory or... When we were even born. Bullshit. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Stop being such a fucking pussy. It's not even that bad. Just tell him. But tell him what? Man, we were like eight. You're the one who wanted me to do this interview and suddenly I'm doing all the fucking talking. Fine, I'll tell him. So when Emma was like eight years old, he wanted to play fucking hide and seek with what he thought were the popular kids. Fucking brats. He hid for so long that he was the last one left and instead of coming out he decided to piss his pants because he wanted to win. But obviously when he won, he came out and everyone saw that he fucking pissed his pants and they made fun of him. And that was kind of like the first fucking day he felt shame. 
It's not even that bad. Well, I don't remember any of that, so... Lies. Moving on. How do you feel about yourself individually? Um, I feel cool. like I'm a very kind, open-minded person. You know, I always do my best to help others. I see myself as kind of fulfilling that mentor role for some. Um, I'm hard working and make sure everyone eats healthy, make sure he works out a few times a week. I keep him sociable, you know. Um, I'm the one who makes Emmett a model citizen. And most importantly, I will never lie, so... What? Your whole thing is making people see what you wanted to see. Not what you really are. You're a fucking fake. If you're looking for honesty, I'm the one you come to. I know I'm an asshole, and I'm okay with that. But at least I can face up to what I am, rather than creating this whole fucking false identity just so I can get people I don't care about to maybe think that there is nothing out of the ordinary about me. I think I should be left behind the wheel more often. Maybe then we can start living somewhat of a fucking interest in life. Christ alive. Okay. <laughs> so, how are you finding lockdown? And how has it affected your relationship? Well, <clears throat> I try to look at it from a positive point of view, you know. Um, I enjoy spending my time at home so I can focus on myself and my work. I've taken the time to start eating healthy, and kicking bad habits, and just really focusing on bettering myself, you know? So basically, everything you just said there was a fucking lie. Honestly, this is the most depressed we've ever been. We wake up at like 3 in the afternoon, eat shit all day, we barely look at any work. The only positive that's come out of this is that we quit smoking. And even with that, that's just made us more depressed because we don't have a fucking crutch to lean on. In terms of our relationship, being confined in such a small space has forced us together, so I guess you can call that a positive. I've never actually heard him speak this much. He usually doesn't have a lot to say. <laughs> Anywho. And the final question is... Are you happy? It's kind of a loaded question. Um, yeah. I think I'm happy anyway. You know, things have been tough lately, but... Um, I think I'm happy. I'm not really sure, actually, so... I wouldn't call it being happy, more like surviving. Surviving. We're barely fucking existing at this point. Like I said, this is the most depressed we've ever been. You need to stop lying to yourself and everyone else and just fucking admit that things aren't all okay. They're shit and they're worse than shit. The sooner you come to terms with that, the sooner we can start doing something about it. Just be honest with yourself. You're not fucking okay. Look, I know things are tough right now. And we're, we're not exactly what you'd call a happy family. But we're stuck in this together, so I'll always have your back. We're going to get through this, even if i got to drag you the rest of the way, okay? It's just... I've just gotten to the point now that I can't keep hiding how much of a wreck I am. And, um... I can barely drag myself out of bed in the morning. And I can feel... The exhaustion and fatigue have finally reached our limit. So we'll deal with it. We always do. This isn't the first tough situation we've been in. So that's proof that we're going to make it to the other side of the thing. I think we're going to need to have a long talk about where we want to go from here. Okay? Hey, look, so interview's over, so you can fuck off.